Longitudinal joints are the seams between two adjacent lanes of asphalt pavement that are constructed at different times. They are the weakest link in asphalt pavement when not constructed properly. Proper joint construction and compaction are essential to prevent issues such as cracking, water infiltration, and premature deterioration. The performance of longitudinal joints is especially critical in airfield pavements due to aircraft heavy loads and high speeds. Foreign object debris from poorly constructed joints is a safety hazard that can be ingested and damage aircraft engines. Longitudinal joints can be constructed as hot or cold joints. This refers to the temperatures of the adjacent asphalt lanes when they're being joined together. The cold lane, or cold side, is the first asphalt mat that is placed. It cools before the other side is placed. The hot lane is placed afterwards next to the cold side. When two lanes remain hot enough to allow for adequate compaction on both sides, this is called a hot joint. Mix that drops below 175 degrees Fahrenheit must be treated as a cold joint since it will be difficult to achieve adequate density. Joints must be constructed as straight as possible with smooth direction changes. Use a string line and a guide mounted to the paver to ensure a straight edge on the cold lane. Edges that are not straight are difficult to match when paving the hot side. This increases the potential for low density areas near the joint. When planning for multiple lifts, ensure each longitudinal joint is offset from the longitudinal joint in the underlying lift by at least one foot. If the airfield is crowned at the center, align the surface lift's longitudinal joint with the center line. There are four main steps to constructing longitudinal joints. Step one, place the first lane, ensuring the tack coat is applied evenly and wide enough to fully cover the course being placed. The edge of the lane will become the cold side of the joint. Step two, compact the first lane. The FAA requires cutback joints on airfields. These are created by physically removing one to three inches of material at the cold edge with a cutting wheel or pavement saw. Use a cutting wheel while the mat is still warm for the cleanest cut. Do not use water or a release agent for cutting ease because it will affect bonding. Collect the trimmings for recycling. Contractors should consider how they plan to remove the cutback material to avoid damaging the cutback joint. Before step three, placing the hot side, apply a tack coat on the cold face joint to improve durability. Next, when placing the asphalt material, ensure there is sufficient material for roll down. Roll down factor is discussed more in the yield calculations video. To prevent gaps, low density, and cracks at the joint, the hot lane must overlap the cold lane. The proper overlap is 0.5 to 1.5 inches for a butt joint and 0 to 1 inch for a cutback joint. Adjust the paver's screed end gate to stay close to the cold joint so you won't need to loot or rake the joint. To compact the hot side, a technique that is shown to be successful is to use a dual wheel steel drum roller 6 to 12 inches off the longitudinal joint. For the second pass, overlap onto the cold mat 3 to 6 inches to compact the strip with the full weight of the roller. Rubber tire rollers, especially those that vibrate, are very effective at compacting longitudinal joints. Refer to the Echelon paving video for more information.